This is my experience, cross-posted from r slash paranormal. I wouldn't consider myself a very spiritual person, but I have no explanation for what I encountered on my family's property, and was hoping to get an answer as to whether or not this was some kind of spirit or entity. My family has around 360 acres in northern Oklahoma that has been in our family since the land rush. Growing up, the family would meet there for Thanksgiving and Christmas, but as the family expanded, quickly outgrown. Nowadays, I'm about the only person that goes there, and I go slash went there regularly to train with arms. I went there earlier this year and had an experience that shook me so badly that I haven't spoken about it until recently and will never go back there alone. I arrived around 2 p.m. and set up my targets, but something felt off. I used an electronic headset for hearing protection that also amplifies ambient noise, and I noticed that everything seemed to stop. No wind, no bugs, no birds, nothing. Just complete and total silence, which is very unusual for the area. I run my normal drills and as the sun starts to set, things get stranger. Odd smells like a dirty litter box plus body odor, started coming around, and I noticed that the coyotes were crossing the of me, almost as if they were intentionally avoiding entering the woods nearby. Then, I started hearing interference coming over my headset, and what sounded like disembodied voicing in an indiscernible language. Now, I'm starting to worry. I start gathering my things, and I hear what sounds like a woman's blood-curdling screams coming from the woods. Around the same time, I got what I can only describe as a nauseating, unidirectional feeling of being watched, shortly followed by very distinct footsteps trudging through the foliage in the tree lean approximately 30 yards from position. I've been an avid hunter since childhood and familiar with noises of the woods, and the cadence of the footsteps were indicative of a large, bipedal creature oddly human-like. I pull my phone out to take video, and I start scanning the tree lean with my flashlight. Standing behind a tree at the edge of the tree lean was a tall, black silhouette with spindly limbs and a pale face, looking directly at me. I managed to capture a great still image of it from the video that I will try to find and attach. I my range bag and made a run towards my truck. I get about 50 yards from the truck and the light post on our property that is hooked up to county power and has never turned off in the 20 years I've been going here, suddenly cuts off. Now I'm running in the direction I believe my truck is in while I hit the unlock button on my fob to find the lights. I get in my truck, speed off, and as I'm watching in the rear view, the post turns back on. I apologize for the long post, but I'm finally ready to get this out in the open for interpretation. I tend to think of myself as a rational person that doesn't necessarily believe in the woo kind of stuff. Although, my mother described me as being sensitive and somewhat gravitated towards energies as a child. I was doing to rationalize or come up with a reasonable explanation for the things I was experiencing, but I have no explanation. The kind of fear this experience put into me is slash was unlike any kind of fear I'd ever felt. Posted this first in our slash ask reddit a long time ago, and figured this would be a good view encounters with a ghost, not a mean-spirited one but rather a more polite ghost who usually referred to himself as Dave. Never saw him, ever, could describe his voice as an elderly hardcore smoker answering you from another room. His voice is always muff and coarse. Here are a few stories with Dave, edited for some clarification. The first time I ever actually heard Dave was when I was nine. I was in the living room, reading a Batman comic book. I heard Dave asking me if Batman was fighting the Joker. I mindlessly just answered, yeah, you can read this after I am done. Took my young brain realizing that there was no one else in the house with me to ask me that at the time. My mom once told me she was taking laundry to her room when she suddenly bumped into something large and invisible making her fall backwards with the laundry. She then heard Dave ex Oh, I'm so sorry, are you okay? My mom saw no one, but she did felt like there was someone helping her get up as well as pointing out where all her fallen clothing went. In my lifetime, we had about seven cats who have lived with us. Every now and then, I will see one of them run over and enjoying someone slash something petting them. Never could get it on camera. In high school, I got a few friends to bring out and Ouija board to my house in hopes to talk to Dave. Before we'd even begin, the little triangle thing that come vanished without a trace. 
Me and my friends were confused until we heard Dave say in a rough voice, No, this is not the time. There is someone outside that you do not want to invite in here. Me and my friends just sat there in silence. Then we put the board away, only taking it out to burn it a few months later during summer camp. Only once did I ask why did Dave haunt our house. His response to this question was him knocking on the walls, leading me to my bedroom door. I opened it up, looked inside, and felt him push me into my room and close the door on me. He sent me to my room for asking him such a personal question. Never brought it up since. There hasn't been much activity since 2014, and my parents who still live there think he has moved on. He was a great ghost, and I do hope he is in a better place now. This happened when I was about 15 in a little town called St. Helens just outside of Portland, Oregon. At the time our family was really going through some tough obstacles. My dad had been acting very strange to himself, and not as he normally did for a couple days. His personality would change quite often. At the time diagnosed with schizophrenia, we were trying to get him help. Leading up to the night I had seen this thing conversing with my dad. I had also experienced very strange dreams and it felt like I had been sat on by someone very heavy. I looked and no one was there. My brother had seen something he called the garbage man on numerous occasions. He said it looked like a bag was over his head and was being sucked into his mouth and eye sockets. It over him and appeared to be very tall. This thing visited him a few times. It was about 2 a.m. and I heard my dad talking to someone or himself. At this point I had a routine of going and talking with him to calm him. My bedroom had been right next to the kitchen and the bathroom because it was a small house. I walk into the kitchen, which had been lightly lit by the outside lights. First thing I see is the very tall shadow figure in the doorway of the bathroom and my dad standing toe to toe with this massive thing. He's mumbling something then he says loudly leave me alone. I'm terrified so I ran right back to my bedroom. My dad's mental state took a turn. It was a struggle for my family to get him help. Eventually, things escalated and my dad was considered a danger to himself and others and was able to get the help he deserved. They did not find drugs and his sister actually diagnosed him with schizophrenia. I don't know why we saw this thing or what it was. I think it was preying on my dad's weakness. Can people with this mental illness see past the curtains? Since this day that question runs through my head a lot. My best friend passed away in 2014. I was in school at the time so I was distraught and didn't know how I would carry on living. To this day, even being married with kids, I'm still feeling like my life is just a log. Like my life was paused that day I found out he died. Fair to say, I was gutted. Anyways, I got really into my PC gaming, and I would play Counter-Strike with my other friends that I met on college. And it's funny because thinking back on it, I never felt alone even when it was just me when my friends were all busy. One night, I dreamt about him. He met me at the Spear Pillar, a location from a Pokemon game loved, and he hugged me and it was as if his young self had matured while being two to three years on the other side, I felt his stubble against my cheek. It was very surreal. Further on, he told me that I need to stop worrying and that he's always with me, be it on the bus, chilling at home or at college. He said he was always there. Then he said something that quite frankly blew my mind. He mentioned how it's nice of me to keep the spot at the end of my bed clear for him to sit down on. As it's his favorite spot every night, he loves watching me play CSGO, especially with my mates. The conversations made him laugh. He said no matter where I am he'll find me and keep me company. It's crazy because consciously I would always clear my bed and bearing in mind my room wasn't always the tittiest. As an adult I've gotten better at being tidy ha ha ha. I'm so glad to have met him, and even when I'm away on deployment, or even putting my kids to bed, I still feel him around it makes me feel happy and very nostalgic. In 2017 I got a tattoo dedicated to him too. It was my first ever tattoo. I just miss my friend. So my grandpa on my mom's side died about 6 to 7 years ago. He's always stuck around, usually can identify him by the smell of cigarette smoke or TV channels changing suddenly. Just last week, my grandma remarried. It was awesome, everyone is happy for her. 
At the wedding, I sat so that my kiddos didn't interrupt the ceremony, and was tit was there I felt my grandpa. My grandma came out of room in her wedding gown this overwhelming feeling of happiness and sadness filled me, and I could feel him standing right behind me. I bawled my eyes out. She was beautiful, I think he thought so too. She had asked my mom months ago for her to move on and I think that confirmed it, 100%. He just wanted to be happy. I just wanted to share that experience, even though it wasn't spooky, sweet and emotional for me. Haven't used Reddit in a while, mainly use Twitter nowadays for my social media urges but I didn't really know where else to, to put this so I'm making a return. Last night I got a call from a military buddy that he was looking for a ride home from the bar and didn't want to spend $30 on an Uber ride. I said sure I was hung over myself and figured it would help to drive with the windows down and get some air. It was probably 12.30 a.m. and I was around my neighborhood trying to take an alternate route that I hadn't taken before but knew about, basically one that went through residential areas and stayed off of the bigger more populated routes. I didn't really want to the entire way getting downtown. So as I'm driving everything was normal. I was listening to some random podcast about World War II. But then as I'm passing this one random house a couple streets down from mine there's a kid standing in the front yard right on the edge of the road. TBH this doesn't sound looking back it was past midnight and this kid was maybe 10 to 11 years old. He had a red shirt, tan shorts and sneakers with a blonde bowl cut. Totally normal looking kid. So as I'm coming up to this kid I get to a speed bump and had slowed down so I was able to get a better look at him. He wasn't playing, he was running around, no other kids were with him, he was just standing completely still and meeting my gaze as I'm going past. Like, the entire way down the street he doesn't stop staring. And after I had passed him I keep looking at my rear view mirror, and he still doesn't stop looking. He doesn't cross the street or go back to playing around he just keeps standing there staring at my truck. On the drive back I told my friend after picking him up about the kid he was interested so I took him back through the same way where I saw the kid this time he wasn't there. Fast forward to when me and my friend get back to my place sitting in my living room shooting the shit watching YouTube and we hear this super fast, quiet knocking at the door. Like so quiet my AC almost completely smothered the sound. It's like 1.30 a.m. at this point and both my roommates are out of town for the long weekend so I was kind v weary of answering the door. I peek out the window next to the front door and see no one there. Honestly this could have just been a tree limb hitting the roof near the front door but in that moment it was like I was having a heart attack thinking I'd see that kid there. Later when I was in bed just laying there I heard a few more random knocks. In different places, the bedroom is right next to the front door and goes out onto the patio that the front door connects to. These knocks could have been at the front door or just in some random spot in the house. At this point I was so tired I really didn't really care to worry a bit and passed out. Waking up this morning thinking about it those knocks creeped me out a bit more but just doing a walk through of my front patio nothing was out of the regular so there's not much else to go on. I know this really isn't the most bone chilling story, but kinda goes to show how kids can be so creepy with zero effort at it. I posted a snap video of the knocking that I'm hearing on my profile, still here later.